guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Karen Harris. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe by hitting that red button. I upload every other day so you do get quite a bit of content from me and I haven't missed an upload in a while. Knock on wood. I do need to give you guys a heads up though at the end of the month-ish. I'm expecting my parents. They're actually coming to visit from Sri Lanka. I do plan on pre-filming before they get here but I have a feeling I won't have enough content all through the month of August even if I filmed every day before my mom gets here but I'm hoping I can find time to also still film but you guys know family comes first so if I do disappear off of YouTube please bear with me they're both going to be flying back to Sri Lanka on September 4th so if you don't hear from me in about a month that's where I'll be of course I will be on Instagram though updating you guys on as many things as I can so if you can't find me on YouTube that's where I'm going to be now I'm sure you can tell from the title of this video it's going to be a Will I Buy It inspired by Samantha March. I always have her channel linked in my description box so if you guys haven't checked her out which I highly doubt that you haven't already go ahead and check down in the description box for her but without further ado let's get into it. There were some palettes I forgot to talk about in my last Will I Buy It video and I'm so mad about it so I'm going to do that today. The one thing I was kicking myself about not talking about is the Suva palette that they are sneak peeking all over the internet. I've seen about three-ish, three, four colors. They even did a little video on their YouTube channel. Now I have a few of Suva Beauty's palettes. They are a Canadian indie brand and I really, really like their aesthetic. It's definitely not the kind of makeup I'm used to doing, but it's so, so vibrant and beautiful. They have these things called Hydra Liners. I actually picked a few up from the Riley Rose website, and I still haven't put them to use, which I'm beating myself up about, but the owner, she is so cool. She just has this like young at heart vibe, and she's also a brown girl. I'm not quite sure what country she's from, but she definitely looks like she could be Indian definitely from the continent I'm from but I could be wrong but I, I'm pretty sure she's Indian I'm I'm pretty sure but if one of you guys know let me know I could probably google it but I don't know I just like to assume these things I guess but she's super cool I love the brand the vibe I have two of their palettes two three of their palettes and I want to test them out I haven't done it yet you guys know I have way too many eyeshadow palettes, but eventually I will review them for you guys. I'm not sure if I'm going to buy this new palette from them. I just don't know if I love their formula. I've tried the few palettes I have just a little bit. Not sure I'm a huge fan, so I'm just going to see what the entire palette looks like once they completely show us what it is. Then maybe I'll decide if it's something I think I can't live without. I'll probably get it if it's something I decide I can live without. I'm going to go ahead and pass on it and leave it for everyone else to buy. And then this is the one I'm so excited about. I'm totally picking up these palettes. These are the Ace Beauté palettes. They're coming out with four of them and the whole of last week they were revealing the different ones. So the first one they showed was the Blossom palette which is all of these beautiful pink ones. Then they did the Slice of Paradise which is a rainbow palette and it's stunning. Then they did the reveal of the palette they called the Classical Paradise, which is just like a warm palette. And then they did Paradise Fallen, which is a beautiful like purple toned palette. This purpley toned palette is al almost making me wonder if I want the ABH Norvina palette. I think I like the idea of the Norvina palette more than I even actually like the shades. I've seen a lot of people review it over the last couple of weeks, people that got it in PR. Seems pretty standard for a ABH palette, but I, I've seen a lot of people say it doesn't have as much purple as you think it does, whereas this Ace Beauté one has at least five purple shades and some cool, like, cool toned brown shades, and I like the idea that they're doing a vault, which is cool, and I have their quintessential palette, and I love the formula. I wish I had more opportunities to use that palette. Unfortunately, I think I like used it, reviewed it, and then it was on to the next one. But I still have that in my collection and I just love the formula in that. So I'm so excited for this Volt type collection they're doing. And I believe it's gonna launch next week. I haven't seen a date from them yet. So definitely keep your eyes peeled if you're interested in that. 
Now, you guys know I talk about Sydney Grace on my channel quite a bit. They are doing their Christmas in July like sales event. So she has a whole list of things that they're doing. I'm just going to try and quickly read it to you guys just so you don't miss out because a lot of you want to try Sydney Grace not only because you hear me talk about it, but there are a lot of YouTubers that talk about this brand for good reason. So on July 15th, which I believe is... is that Monday? No, that's tomorrow, Sunday. For every $50 you spend on anything in the store, you get nine new summer inspired shades. And these shades are gorgeous. They look just like the Yes Please palette and all those like fun warm tone palettes we've seen recently. And I think this is beautiful. I honestly don't need another palette with shades like this like at all. So I'm going to try to resist and just not buy them because I don't need them. July 16th, all loose pigments and glitters will be 40% off and highlighters and blushes will be 30% off. And they say they have new highlighters and blushes. I'm not a huge fan of loose pigments or glitters, so that doesn't really Really interest me and I do like highlighters and blushes but again I feel like I have enough so I won't be in I'm not too interested in that. July 17th, all eyeshadow bundles will be 30% off. Now, I do have quite a few of their eyeshadow bundles. I don't think there are many on their site that I don't have. So, I think I'm also going to be able to pass on that day. July 18th, they're doing a surprise bag. So, $20 makeup bag with $50 worth of product, which is really interesting, I think. Now, the one day I'm sure I am going to want a few things is July 19th. They are doing all cream shadows will be $5 each. Now, I have a Sydney Grace cream shadow review video on my channel. I'll go ahead and link it up in the cards in case you guys are interested in seeing it. She is coming out with 10 new cream shadow shades. There's this bright green one that I totally have my eye on. The only thing is I'm so tempted to buy all the cream shadows but they only have a six month shelf life and you guys know I have enough eyeshadow to like smear my whole body with for probably for the rest of my life basically. So I'm a little bit wary because I'm like oh, I want them all but I'm trying to restrain myself so we'll see how that day goes. July 20th, spend $50 on anything in the store and you will get a complimentary Milk Gemini palette dupe. So they have dupes, they figured out dupes for from their collection for the Milk Gemini palette. I'll post a picture if you guys are interested and they will give you that with a $50 purchase which is an amazing deal. July 24th, they're probably going to do something it doesn't say in their post yet. July 22nd, all single shadows will be 25% off, which is high for them. I don't think I've seen them do more than 20%, so 25 is a good time for you guys to try the brand in case you've had your eye on them. I have had a few subscribers, friends reach out to me and ask me if I could recommend what to buy, and my honest answer is I have a lot of their stuff, but I haven't tried everything yet. I do have a get ready with me where I use some of the shadows and I would like to think I can get that edited and up before the 22nd but most likely not so we'll see how it goes. I have a lot of swatch party videos with that brand so go ahead and check those out and hopefully that will help you out. So far I personally liked everything I've tried from them but I don't have any specifics that are like oh my gosh you have to have this you have to have that except the cream shadows and I do really like their dupes for the Icy Betch palette that Tarte did as their April Fool's joke. So those are the two things I think you should check out if you're into like blues and greens that Icy Betch dupe is amazing. Again, I haven't used all the colors from that palette either. So sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so unprepared, but I just wanted to tell you guys about that sale because it's amazing and I'm your friend and I want you guys to be able to take advantage of a good deal and also support a bomb ass indie brand because why freaking not. Um, Give Me Glow Cosmetics is already started working on their next palette. Looks like it's going to be called the Grunge Palette and it's a 90s grunge rock inspiration. That'll be a really interesting to see. Now I do have both of their palettes, the big ones, the Staple Palette and the Summer Vibes Palette. I owe you guys a review on the Summer Vibes Palette. I've honestly been testing the Violet Voss Flamingo palette. So I've been trying to like dedicate enough time to do one palette at a time instead of like using multiples. So I will probably have a review of the Flamingo palette go up first and then I will test the Summer Vibes palette. Plus I'm like testing a million other palettes. So good fucking lord. <laughs> Anyway, I am excited to see what this palette will look like. I don't know if I'll buy any more palettes from them. Right now, I just have so many palettes to test, and I'm going to try and limit myself to only buying from brands like that are new to me 
or it's something that I like simply cannot say no to and I'm not really into grungy like dark smoky shadows so hopefully it'll be something I won't be interested in. The shade names are cool. They have like Bonehead, Teenage Dirtbag, 90s, Punk, Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit, Grunge, Underground, Black Hole Sun. So a lot of those names definitely resonate with a lot of people if you were into like punk rock and nirvana and being a like a little rocker in high school <laughs> so anyway very excited for that because i do like that brand quite a bit and then i also saw black moon is teasing a new palette it, it says if you love the orb of light palette just wait until you see the next one so a lot of people here on youtube that love indie brands really seem to appreciate black moon cosmetics I was really hyped for it, but once I saw the inside, I think me and the whole of the internet were just like, what? Like, really? We're coming out with another neutral palette? So I wasn't even interested in that in the remote, like, vicinity of interested. And yeah, this one, I don't know. This cover makes it look like it's going to be another neutral palette. So it'll be interesting to see what they actually put out. Maybe this is like a whole... To confuse people so they made the writing all red and it's gonna be like a purple palette so who knows it'll be interesting I will keep you guys updated if I see any new information from them and the other thing I wanted to talk about is this palette called slush by shop September Rose I saw makeup struggles mention this on her Instagram story and I think this palette is so cool because it is a rainbow palette, but I love how like each row is like a gradient. So there's a pink row, an orange, a green, a blue, and a purple. Seems really beautiful. This is a European brand. I think it's from the UK. And I did go on their website, check it out and stuff like that. But I was able to convince myself to restrain myself because I literally have a pile of palettes that I'm pretty sure you guys don't even know I own and I haven't even swatched them so I literally cannot like just buy eyeshadow palettes anymore I need to get through the ones I want to test and declutter the ones I don't want to keep in my collection and I'm not just gonna willy-nilly buy eyeshadow palettes right now I also just bought a sugar pill palette oh my god <laughs> I my friend Georgia Harris on YouTube I will go ahead and link the video if I remember she did this little video saying like sugar pills just restock their single shadows and i have heard people talk about sugar pill for like the last couple of years on youtube and i was like mm, it's too expensive too expensive and then finally they restocked most of their shades and i was like fuck it now's the time so i did buy a pro palette it was like 120 dollars it literally hurt i'm excited to see how that palette works out it's gonna be here on Monday, so I'll probably do a unboxing video if I'm in the mood for it. But the slush palette looks really cool. If you guys are into, you know, random, unheard of indie brands, you might be interested in this. So I just wanted to mention it to you guys in case you were. Looks like they announced when those new Milani palettes are coming out. There will be two of them. Pure Passion and Soft Soul Treat will launch July 29th on their website you can use trim mood for 15% off and in early August it'll be a Walmart exclusive so you should be able to find it at Walmart. These palettes are really cool. Are they like mind-blowing for somebody like me that has a ridiculous amount of eyeshadow palettes? Definitely not so I won't be buying them just because it's not something I really need in my collection right now. I still have like two little Milani palettes that I meant to review for you guys and uh, there's no reason for me to buy more so I will be passing on these but I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It seems no. like a lot of people are freaking out about the I Love Sarahi collaboration with Dose of Colors. Now I've talked to you guys about this before. I haven't had good luck with Dose of Colors. Desi X Katie was such a disappointment to me. I don't like their eyeshadow formula. I do like their lipstick formula though, the liquid lipstick formula. And I must say the shade Freesia is really calling my name. But a lot of the nudes and the glosses and things like that she's doing on here, I'm not a huge fan of. The palette is kind of strange. It definitely looks a lot like the Rihanna, like the Fenty Beauty Moroccan Spice palette. It just looks like a six pan palette instead of like that big giant palette that Rihanna did. So that eyeshadow palette is $35. She's also doing two highlighters. They're $28 each, which I believe is the same price as 
the Desi X Katie highlighters. I'm actually wearing the shade Miramay on my face today and it was one of those things where I was like, oh my gosh, I should really like pull out some of my older products and I do love this highlighter. It is a great color for the summer, but the ones I Love Sarah E is doing look to be a little bit lighter. Not really my scene, so I'm totally okay skipping those. Four matte liquid lipsticks, $18 each, and then two glosses for $17 each. These will be available July 27th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So there's really no break in the makeup community, guys. It's just like, you think like, oh, okay, the ABH palette is coming out. I don't think there's anything else like crazy coming out. But no, nope, it's like always something's on back burners. So I didn't even know this was a thing, but Becca Cosmetics launched a new concealer. Now they have an ultimate coverage foundation and they did a ultimate coverage longwear concealer. These retail for $29. They are water resistant, full coverage, instant camouflage, and instantly camouflage under eye dark circles, blemishes, and discolorations while smoothing the skin's texture with a satin finish. Now, I do like Becca. I love their Aqua Luminous Foundation. I haven't owned it in a while. I haven't had much luck with anything else on their like foundation range. I tried the Ultimate Coverage Foundation. I actually sent it back. I was just not a fan, and I don't think I had the right shade, so I was happy to send that back. And I just bought the Too Faced Born This Way concealer, like their full coverage concealer. So I'm good for now. I'm just going to test that and see if I like it. Plus, I have a ton of concealer back here that I want to use up. Plus, I have a bunch of the ColourPop concealers. So I'm good on this one. I'm sure it's a great product if you're looking for the millionth full coverage concealer. Here it is for you, but I am going to be passing on that. Now we have a little sneak peek of a little highlighting palette that is coming out for the holidays from Bobbi Brown. And I must say, this is absolutely gorgeous packaging. They're called the Two Highlighting and Glow Highlighting Powder Duo. So they're two really beautiful shades. Um, they've got some gorgeous pattern embossed on them. I personally have one Bobbi Brown highlighter and I'm totally satisfied with that. So this does not tempt me at all as far as the highlighters go. They're also coming out with like mini lipsticks and a bunch of other stuff. Again, not really tempted by the brand. So I will keep you guys posted on it, but so far I have really nothing to say about that. So it looks like Laura Lee Los Angeles is coming to Ulta.com, which I'm sure a lot of you are excited about because now you can use the 20% off coupon towards any of Laura's palettes. And uh, usually I don't like to talk about Laura Lee, but we did get a sneak peek of those two new palettes she's coming out with for, I don't know, is it like considered a summer launch? I feel like a lot of people have kind of said what everyone is thinking is that it kind of looks like what you had wished the Mandy palette would have been, just like two separate palettes. She's doing like a really bright palette and a neutral palette. I love the idea of this palette. I'm just like worried about the pigmentation. I wouldn't personally go out and buy this on her website. I tried to support an influencer. I tried to buy from Christian Dominique Cosmetics and I got burned. I got burned, girl. I burnt my hand taking a pizza out of the oven. So I have no interest in trying any of these like influencer owned brands. They are too sketchy for me. Once I know for sure like I can return it, maybe I will consider buying from them, but really I won't because I just don't like their brands and their personalities. So I'm going to be passing, but I will be interested to see what everyone else has to say about this stuff. Okay, so Kat Von D re uh, released some Metal Crush and liquid highlighters. These are so not my shade, so I'm not really interested in this at all. It looks like that palette she had that's on sale on Sephora. These look like the same colors for the most part, except they're in their own compacts, which could be nice if you didn't want to buy the whole palette. So there's that. I did see her wedding video. It was on YouTube. Oh my gosh, it was intense. You guys will have to let me know what you think. I mean, it's definitely not my wedding vibes, but 
Maybe some of you are into that. I don't really know. Definitely know. Let me know though your thoughts because I'm curious to hear. Smashbox came out with a, a Blaze little collection. There are a few things. They have a face palette for $39, always on metallic mattes for $24, an eye and lip set for $35, and a lip palette for $24. So this all looks like it's available on their website. Honestly, not a fan of Smashbox. I think I should just add them to my list of brands I don't like. I don't think they've made a single thing that I have bought in the last, in a long time. Their their products are pretty bad. And so. so that makes me kind of weary of them. I don't know, maybe I'll try them someday. I do like the packaging a lot, so we'll see. I shouldn't put the horse before the cart. We'll see how that goes. Zueva is coming out with an eyeshadow palette called ICI. And there are 10 shades. It's available now. Brand you can't buy in the U.S., but they do ship to the U.S. So if you're feeling like spending some money, you can, you know, shop their website. I've heard really good things about their eyeshadow brushes. And a lot of people actually do like their eyeshadow palettes as well. I have three of their eyeshadow palettes. I've tried one of the three, and I wasn't that impressed by the shadows. So I would personally recommend spending your hard-earned money. But if you want to, that's totally up to you. Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with a new magic setting powder. Didn't I tell you guys that every brand that doesn't have setting powder is going to come out with setting powder? Because it is the season of setting powder all of a sudden. And they're also going to do a magic concealer with 16 shades, pillow top collection which includes quad eyeshadow palette, and a holiday collection coming up as well obviously with the holidays and shit like that. Looks to be very interesting. There is also a eyeshadow palette called Stars in Your Eyes which looks to be quite beautiful beautiful actually. So it'll be interesting to see what these all like. I really still hope Charlotte Tilbury comes to Sephora. I really really want to try the brand. I might buy some of their stuff on Beautylish. We'll see how it goes. I just don't feel like her foundation shades are gonna work with my skin tone but we'll give it a try and see. Colourpop has already come out with a primer and a setting spray. So the primer is a $10 primer and the setting spray is a long wearing oil controlling alcohol free lightweight setting spray for $10 as well. This is again part of the ColourPop like let's launch something every week so we can get people excited about our brand which is a great marketing strategy. I personally don't need another primer or a setting spray so I will be passing on that. So excited about this Wet n Wild Zodiac collection that they are doing. They are doing four beautiful Mega Glow, hi Mega Glow highlighting bars symbolizing the air, fire, earth, and water, an eyeshadow palette and a gloss collection as well as some highlighting powder. This will be available July 17th on their website as well as on at Walmart August 1st. So this collection I think is so stunning. I mean for the drugstore I feel like this is truly quite innovative. I know a lot of people are kind of overwent and well it seems like they're doing the same thing too but I really think for a drugstore brand Actually, just for a brand in general, they are doing a good freaking job. I love that they're offering things at an affordable price. These eyeshadow palettes look adorable. I love how they're in like a circle pan instead of their regular shadows. I think they're really switching it up and that's amazing. So good for them. Now ABH is adding some shade extensions to their liquid highlighter shades. Honestly, I feel like their liquid highlighters was one of those things where there's a little bit of hype because people got them in PR so there was buzz about them when they came out. But I swear to you, I did not see a single person that went out and bought those highlighters on their own on YouTube. I mean, I'm sure there must be somebody, but I don't think these are like anything revolutionary. I'm not a huge fan of liquid highlighters. I have the custom cover FX drops and I honestly never use them, so I will not be buying any more. Okay, so Pixie just came out with a bunch of stuff and I actually saw some of this at my Target and I shit a brick because some of it's really expensive. Like, that's my gripe with Pixie. Like, I think they're cool. I think they're a cool drugstore brand, but some of their stuff, like even their glow tonic, like I cannot bring myself to spend $15 on a toner from the drugstore. They came out with a Rose Glow Mist, which I saw at Target. Uh, rose ceramide cream pixie glow cake which this fucking pixie glow cake is $28 like I wanted to buy it because it looks so much like the Kevin Aquan bronzer palettes 
that are also hideously expensive, but at least that's Kevin Aquan. This is fucking drugstore and it's $20, so I'm hoping they'll go on sale because I cannot afford that shit. And then they also have a little lash lift for $18, so not really that affordable, but interesting nonetheless. So if you guys have tried any of that stuff, let me know. So if you guys aren't, you know, keeping up with sales and stuff like that, the Nordstrom Anniversary Sale is currently happening. And it's kind of cool because they do these like beauty exclusives, so stuff that's maybe coming out in the fall that are exclusively like pre-launched for just Nordstrom, so you can buy it there first. And I did like peruse through there, there wasn't anything that really like caught my eye. There was like a Charlotte Tilbury like face palette, some NARS stuff, but all of it just looked so blah and like it had been done before so I was I was okay. I was like, mm, I'm good, I'm good. Um, Sugar Pill is coming out with three new sparkling liquid lipstick shades. There's Dollop, which is a Sweet Rose, Pillow Fight, which is a Dusty Mauve, and Truth or Dare, which is a black and burgundy. I've never tried anything from Sugar Pill. I had mentioned I just bought their Pro Palette. So I am good for now and I'm honestly not into shimmery liquid lipsticks or any kind of lipstick so I will be passing on that of course. Okay guys here's something I kind of want to try but I will never pay 20 whatever dollars. Is it $28 for this mascara? Hourglass is coming out with a new mascara called Extreme Lash. It just says that it has a 4D amplifier brush combines two brushes in one to deliver intense volume, length, definition, and lift. But I believe this is $29. I'm pretty sure I'm like, hell no. Hell no, I'm not spending $29 on a freaking mascara. Are you high on drugs? Like, no thank you. Mucho gracias, but no. Okay, Smashbox is coming out with these mini palettes. Oh my god, so cute. They're for cover shot palettes. So they're coming out with one called The Minimalist, which is perfect for every day. The Prism, which is a gorgeous iridescent palette, and then the Major Metals. These are some sexy metallics, it says. So the one I like, I think, is the one they would call the iridescent one, the Prism one. It looks beautiful, but I have not seen anyone give these palettes a good review. Um, so I will never, ever, 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 ever buy them. So L'Oreal is teaming up with Camilla Cabello or Cabello, Cabello, Cabello. I actually saw her. She was pretty cool. She opened for Bruno Mars last year when we went to Bruno Mars here in Fargo. And she was cool as shit. Like, I like her. Don't get me wrong. But is she using L'Oreal makeup? Of course not. Like, I wish brands would stop doing this. Like, it's 2018, okay? I mean, I guess her fans will buy it, but, like, none of us really want to pretend that a celebrity, like, megastar is using L'Oreal makeup. Like, it's not happening, okay? I'm gonna be hard passing. I do think the packaging is really cute as well. Okay, guys, that is everything I wanted to discuss in my Will I Buy It video. Let me know your thoughts on some of these new makeup launches. You guys know I love hearing from you, so please go ahead and comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.